All right, welcome to review session number five. Uh, this week is link recursion and binary search trees. So we have the sign in link here. I don't know how it's going to work since this one we're only recording and this isn't a live stream. So um, I would just suggest filling it out anyways if you watch it. Um, I think it goes towards your Lori experience record. So yeah, so you can just copy that link, pause the video or whatever if you need to. And so this is our session roadmap. We had a little bit of a numbering error on the last one. So the last one um, was four, but we were going to call this one four. But anyways, okay, this one's five. Uh, and it's our last one before the um, exam review one, which I believe is in person. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Stephen. But uh, I think uh, yeah, it, is, it is in person. All right, yeah. So that'll be our last one. Uh, this is our last normal session. And it's going to be recorded, and we're not doing this live. So, yeah, for we're at. And so today's agenda, we're going to be going through a brief introduction and then looking into link recursion and then binary search trees. So pretty small topics this week. And as always, here's the useful, uh, some useful links and resources. You can pause the video if you want to read into it more. And the cheat sheet, I don't, we didn't uh, update this cheat sheet, but it's still useful. This is from our last session. So let's start off with uh, some link recursion. Uh, we're going to jump into an explanation, common uses, examples, and some common questions. So let's get right into it. So what is link recursion? Uh, the first thing is, as the name suggests, link recursion is recursion just using link data structures. So uh, although recursive functions themselves usually seem more complex than their iterative counterparts, with link structures it's quite the opposite. So this is like if you're trying to um, recurse through like a linked list and work yourself like backwards through that list, recursion is really useful at doing, is useful at going backwards, let's say through that um, linked list. Since each object, it's like the example that Steven had in one of the other sessions where like I can only call like OB and then OB can only call like save. And because it's like, that's kind of like a link structure because one person or one node only knows the next one and then that one only knows the next one recursion is really useful at um in those use cases so speaking of which some common use cases we have link lists as i just mentioned uh link queues and then binary search trees uh that all take into consideration and use link recursion to solve different problems so if we want to hop into an example real quick yeah, so we're going to look at pretty similar, sorry, uh, to what Rob was saying with only being able to really go forward when you're working with iterative um, functions. So here we just have a simple link to list. I'm sure all of you guys know the implementation by now. And we have two functions here. One's print list and it's recursive. And one is print list and it's iterative. So Pretty simple. If front is none, just return. So once you get to the end of the list, um, just return nothing. So it stops the recursion. And then you just want to print front's value. So front is a node, by the way. It's not a linked list. So you're just giving it the front of a linked list. So we're printing the front's value. And then we're calling it again with the next. And it's pretty similar with the sort of implementation. So while front is not is not done. So once while we're not at the end of the loop, uh, at the end of the list, we print the front value and then front equals front next. So it's pretty similar. It's actually exactly the same. Like if you think about it. So, but here's the thing that we can't do with iteration and what we have to use recursion for. Since this is a singly linked list, it's not doubly linked. I think you may look at doubly linked before the final exam, but doubly linked has uh, a next value and a previous value, whatever. With those, you can do reverse print just because you can call reverse over and over. But with this one, since it's singly linked, you can only go forwards using iteration. But with recursion, you can go backwards using a pretty simple trick of calling the reverse print function first and then printing afterwards. So this is going to go all the way to the end, like how we were talking about before 
in our previous review session with recursion, recursion starts from the top and all of the functions get called and then they're executed back. So if we think about it here, when the print is called first, it's just gonna print and then call the next one. So it's just gonna be here and then the print list is gonna get called again with the rest of this list and then print the front and then continue. So the print comes before the function call, but here the print comes after the function call. So the first print is only gonna execute from the very end when front is not none. So it prints, if you think about it, it prints this and then it gets called, prints this, then it gets called, prints this, and then it gets called. So if we run this really quick, we can see the iterative print, it's one, two, three, four, five, where this is just our list values right now. So just think of a linked list with these values. And recursive should return the same thing. And then the reverse print returns correct. So what we learned here is that if uh, we use recursion and call the recursive before we do whatever we want, we can iterate through a list, a linked list, singly linked list backwards, even without having a previous attribute or a back attribute with only having a front attribute. Oh, well, we do have a rear attribute in the list, but it doesn't really mean anything to us because the rear only has a next value of null and we can't look at the previous from rear. So we can't really do anything backwards with linked, singly linked lists using iteration. So we have to use it. We have to do it using recursion. So that's why recursion is extremely important in uh, linked data structures. It also makes things a lot easier just conceptually because if you do think about it, linked data structures are linked and recursion is like in and of itself um, a function linked to another function like just with a different call. So like the functions are always going to be linked very similar to how a data structure is linked. So that's why like conceptually it just makes a lot more sense to use recursion and it makes things a lot simpler once you really understand linked data structures and recursion, linked recursion is just like a no-brainer. And it's like absolutely the way to go when working with linked data structures. So yeah, that's like a very quick example, just like very common use case of linked recursion. So we're going to continue on with another super important linked data structure that most of the time requires recursion. You can do some iteration with BSTs, but most of the time we're looking at recursion. So Rob's going to start explaining BSTs, and then we're going to look at an example really quick. That's sweet. Drop back in the slides here. Oh, I went back one by accident. All right, yeah, so we're just going to jump into the BSTs now, binary search trees. So let's start out by defining what a binary search tree, like what binary search trees are. So a binary search tree is the first non-linearly non linked data structure. This means that it'll have a value attribute along with more than one next attribute. So like a tree in a binary search tree, each, um, each parent node can have up to two uh, children nodes. So you have like a left and a right node on a maximum of, of like a parent node. So this is what we're talking about when we say more than one next attribute, because technically there's a left and there's a right that's possible. Um, and in this case, each node has a value attribute and a left and a right. Yeah, I just said that. And then the binary search trees have a unique attribute similar to the priority queue where each value to the left of a node must be smaller than the node itself. And each value to the right of the node must be larger. So if I had like a, a parent node, uh, let's say like the head of my tree was like a three. So the node to the left of it, if there was one, it would have to be less than three. So it would have to be like two or one. And then if I were to have something larger than three, like let's say four or five or whatever, that would appear on the right side of the tree. So some common use cases for binary search trees. The main functionality of BSCs is the ability to search in uh, log o, log o of log n time. Uh, much like a sorted list, a BSC allows the data that is being searched to be cut instead of needing to look through the entire set of data. So it's it's similar to the um uh like binary like search function like of like a list let's say where like every time you if you have like a sorted list let's say um because this is sort of the same idea you could cut the list in half each time to figure out whether your number is smaller or greater than like each cut in half so when you when you cut something in half repeatedly each time that's your that's log that's a log um time complexity because you're having you're having each time 
So binary search trees say, uh, share that same sort of idea because we're storing it in essentially an unordered format because again, like I said, the the numbers are sorted with the smaller ones on the left side of each node and then the larger ones on the right. So the binary search trees end up being sorted like in themselves. So that's why you were able to have this O oh, log n time for searching. All right, so we're going to look at just the implementation of a binary search tree. And then we're just going to look at a quick visualization to really help us understand how like insertion and removing works with a binary search tree. So here we have um, a BSD node. It has a value attribute, a left attribute, right attribute, and it has a basic height of one. So what height is pretty much is just like including the parent node. Like let's say a parent node is, let's call it A. A has a height of one always just because, well not always, it counts itself. And if it has one more child, it has a height of two. But if it gets another child, it'll still have a height of two just because the level like didn't increase. So height is pretty much like how many levels down um, the node extends. And count is just how many um, children the, the node has. So update height is just a function that we use to update the height. So we're just checking whether we got a new level and it's just gonna be a bit useful or doing like the insertion and whatnot. But so now we're starting the BST class. It just has a root, which is a node and a count, which is just the amount of nodes. So very quickly looking at the insert function, the insert function calls the insert aux. So since we know it's an auxiliary function, we know it's gonna be recursive. So it's calling the auxiliary function and giving it uh, the root. So the, the first node, the parent node and a value to insert into it. And the insert aux returns an inserted value. This is just a true or false, just to make sure while testing later on and whatnot. Okay, so we kind of know how the insert works just by, like the insert is very simple with the binary search tree. The remove is a little bit harder. So just running through this implementation really quick. If node is none, so if we've gotten to where we wanna be, node equals BST value, BST node value. So we're just creating a new node. We're increasing the count and we're giving inserted, which is just a true or false value, a tr value of true. So if node, if the value of the node that we're currently at is greater than the value, we have to move left because we know that everything on the left is gonna be smaller than the current node's value. And then because of this, we move left and we call the insert on node left and the same value. And same thing, if node value is less than value, we go to the right and call the function again. Then else, this means we couldn't find where we want to insert, insert it equals false. So this means we either found a value that was the same as the value we don't want, um, two of the same values in a BST, it doesn't really make sense because how are we going to have a five in a BST and then insert another five? Where are we going to go? We can't go left, we can't go right. It doesn't really make sense because neither of them are greater than or less than, and they're going to be equal. So it doesn't really make sense to insert another five into the BST. And now we're just checking if inserted, we just update the height of the node. So we're just calling this function again. It's just making sure that we're like not creating another level. And if we are, we're just updating the height. Okay, so the remove function, pretty simple. Um, we're calling the remove aux exactly how we called it with the insert. And this is just a helper function, this delete node left. It's just um, deleting the biggest node in the left subtree. And it's just gonna help us with the remove aux, just because when you are removing a node in a binary search tree, there's like a lot of, like if you have two children in it, you're gonna have to move stuff around. So we'll see that here. So if node is none, value equals none, that just means we have no value. We didn't find what we were looking for. It's not in the tree, whatever. So if key, exactly the same as how we're doing it with insert, if key is less than node value, go to the left. If key is greater than, go to the right. Uh, else, that means we found the value. So now we're gonna 
go into the process of removing it. So value equals node value. That's just the return because we want to return the value just in case we want to work with it or anything. We decrement the count. No left is none and node right is none. So if this node had no children, we can just remove it. It doesn't really matter. So if node left is none, so this is just another case. If we're just checking if it has a right or has a left. So this is saying if the node had a right child, we make the node um, just the right child. So we just, if it had two here, we want to delete this one. We just delete this and move it up. That's pretty much it. And same thing with the left. And so now this is if it had two child, uh, two children. So if node left or right is none, so if the node left or right, so it's the biggest node in the left subtree, then the replacement node is node left. So we're just making sure that, that it doesn't have any children in the left node and we can just like move it up without really any, um, without really any trouble. And so here, we're just saying replacement node is delete node left of node left. So we're getting the biggest subtree, uh, biggest value in the left subtree, and that's a re new replacement node. And its left value is going to be the node that we removed currently. Its left value and its right value is going to be that. And then we're just setting node equal to replacement node. It kind of seems confusing now, but we're going to look at a visualization really quick right after I get to the data section here. That'll like really simplify how this function works. Um, so if node is not none and value is not none, we just update the height. So we're just making sure that we actually removed something. So we return node and we return value and done. Okay, so we have two sets of data here. They're all the same numbers, but data one is just an increasing order and data two is in an order that's gonna balance the subtree, uh, balance the BST in a sense. So. Let's insert these values. So it's just gonna be one to 11. So we can do that pretty easily. So it's just gonna, we can speed up the animation here just a little bit, just because we know that because it's increasing every time, it's just gonna keep going to the right. So seven. we don't really have to do the entire data set just because we know it's just gonna keep going to the right. So now um, we can do a delete. So here we've seen our function. Since node right, we have something in node right. If we want to delete seven, let's say, the seven is just going to get replaced by the eight. So we can delete seven. It finds seven, boom, and it just replaces it with the eight. So the six is new right child is now eight. So let's clear this. Let me just refresh the page and insert it in this order. So we can see. We're starting off in the middle. So uh, let me just slow down the animation speed a little bit just so we can see what's going on. So when we start in the middle, if we ever want to balance a subtree, our parent has to be the middle value just because that way we can have the middle and then everything that is smaller than that will be here and everything that is less than will be here. And the two halves will have the same amount of nodes or one less on each side if the set of data is even if it's odd they're going to have the same just because the parent is at the top and then the left and right whatever you guys know what i'm saying so six nine three so far we have eight and so if we see how it's inserting let's slow down the animation speed a little bit so 10 i'm going to insert next so it's going to be bigger than six bigger than nine so it's just going to keep going to the right so if we see it inserting 10 it's bigger than or equal to bigger than or equal to boom 10. So next we have two, four, and seven, insert those. So the two is gonna be smaller than six, smaller than three. So it's gonna be inserted to the left. So seven or four now, it's gonna be smaller than six, but larger than three. So it's gonna go into three's right because it's bigger than it. Seven, 11, bigger than nine, uh, smaller than nine, smaller than eight. So it's gonna go there, 11. It's going to be bigger than six, bigger than nine, bigger than 10. So it's going to go all the way to the right. Yep, there we go. And then we have one and five. So one is going to go all the way to the very left. And five is going to go to four's right subtree. So if you see how we inserted them now, it looks pretty balanced. It looks good. So now let's try to remove, let's say, the three, just because it has actually. 
yeah, let's start off with the three. And let's delete that. So it's looking there. It has two subchildren, so it's going to copy the value of that. It's going to copy the left node. How this is this case right here. Um, it's going to be uh, no left, right? It's going to be this one right here. So it's going to delete the biggest one. The node left is now the replacement nodes new node left. If we saw that again, let's do it with two again, just so let's slow down the animation speed a little bit. So deleting two. It's just searching for it. We found it. So node, and we just copy it up, and boom, done. So the delete is pretty simple once you see it in action. And let me just do one more thing. If we put six in here, we know what's going to happen. Boom. So th that was a kind of a weird case, just because we expect if we delete six that the entire subtree is gone. But the way that we are doing it um, here, we just want to like, we never want the subtree to get deleted if we delete the parent node. So with that, we also got to this case. So if we saw that animation was kind of fast, but if you guys want to rewind in the video a little bit, the six was here and the five was here. So it went to the left and it found the largest item in the left subtree. That's always what we're trying to do is find the largest item in the left subtree of the original thing and set it as that just so it like stays as balanced as possible. That's why we're trying to do like that, for instance. So yeah, that's pretty much how binary search trees work. Binary search trees are extremely useful. Like Rob said, they're very much liked um, sorted lists in the fact that they can get um, searched extremely easily. So if we wanna search for let's say eight, we can look at the parent right away and see that eight is bigger than it. So we can literally disregard. So now we're only searching. So we're only searching this subtree now because we know eight is bigger. So now we look at nine and eight is smaller. So we can delete 10 and 11 and 11. So now this is all we have to search. And then we can just search it again. And we know that eight is right there because we just go to the left of nine because eight is smaller than nine. So if we see that, it's always going to be cut in half regardless because we're always eliminating either the right or the left side. And that is pretty much the exact definition of O of log n time. And that's extremely, extremely useful when we have um, huge data sets and not even like sets of just numbers, but huge data sets of anything else that take a very long time to search through these very like minute details. Like o, o of n time doesn't really feel like a long time when it's 10 objects. Like there's almost no difference between O of n and O of log n when there's like 10 items in a list. It's almost instant. But when you have millions of items that aren't just integers that like take um, a bit of time and a, a bit of machine power to... um to compare like these small like log n and o n differences the time complexity really really comes into play with like computing power and just like time efficiency it takes so long to do certain things if you were to not do them efficiently enough so binary search trees are just extremely efficient for searching and inserting is very efficient too and deleting is like pretty efficient so all the functions in binary search trees are more efficient than lists and queues and anything that isn't sorted in essence. So binary search trees are extremely, extremely useful. And yeah, you guys are gonna be seeing them a lot in the future. So I hope this kind of helped you get a little bit more familiarized. I hope the visualization helped. And yeah, so that's pretty much what there is to know about binary search trees. Sweet, all right. So I, I don't know why we have the questions live because this was meant to be live, but we ended up recording it. But uh, if you have any questions, you could, you guys could always, you know, you guys know how to reach us uh, through the Discord channel, uh, through the LCS Discord. Um, and yeah, I think we have one more slide. The feedback side, this one, um, give us any feedback 
you want, we always look at it. We look at to improve these sessions every single time we do them. Uh, so please, please, please give us feedback because, you know, we try to make this the best we can for you guys. So, yeah. And I think that's, yeah, that's our last slide. So, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, take it easy. All right, cool. That was good.